But with that said, then uh, uh, as you can see, our topic here, healthy solutions for EMF and solar radiation exposure. And uh, I'll make a little, uh, I, I want to make a little editorial comment at the beginning because we're, t we're sitting here at dinner and, and Susan goes to me you know, in front of the speaker and says, well, um, you know, that I'm a skeptic. And um, I was kind of thinking the analogy, you know, you know, people, of course, you know, the, the old story hundreds of years ago, uh, when, when doctors were coming out saying, you know, some, some doctors, physicians were saying, hey, I'm washing my hands and I'm getting less, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm getting less uh, child death and, you know, maternal mortality is going down and diseases are going down and stuff like that. But right at the beginning, well, it was like people, you know, like the, the, the societies in England, they were scoffing at the doctors that were in India, you know, reporting this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, and if you go back further, it's like, you know, something you can't see is affecting your health. I mean, how can that be, right? It's like, now we know microbes and bacteria and stuff like that. So I like to be, uh, I like to consider myself a scientist in some kind of ways, but then very soon somebody will say something I disagree with and I'm confronted with my own kind of confirmation bias that I don't want to, you know, I don't want to accept something that I can't see or that I can't accept or whatever. So I guess that's kind of, I'm at the skeptic phase of this myself, and I, but there's a lot of mounting, you know, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence and there's a lot of actual studies too on this. So it's a very, uh, it's a new topic and it's wrought with kind of political turmoil because there's 5G stations going up and they have to be closer together to give the kind of coverage we need. And, you know, now we've got these satellites being launched around the Earth so that we could all have Wi-Fi wherever we are on the planet. Uh, so I don't know where this is all going, but it's important to be on top of it. And uh, I'd like to introduce our speaker uh, is uh, Elizabeth Plord. Dr. Plord is a clinical laboratory scientist, certified menopause practitioner and author with a background in cancer and DNA testing. She is a thought leader and scholar in hormones and electromagnetic radiation. Her career spans decades of research, consulting, teaching, and writing. Through her consultation practice and her own experience, she has become a passionate advocate of educating people on how not only to survive, but also thrive living in today's electromagnetic assault and environmental toxin load. Her book, EMF Freedom, Solutions for the 21st Century Pollution, has recently won the Best Environmental Book of the Year Award. Her research has also led to two books de detailing how sunscreens actually promote skin cancers and are harming all marine life with answers that are healthy for us and the planets. Please welcome Dr. Elizabeth Plord. So we see we get a little... Okay, good, this is Dr. Marcus Lord. He was talking about Dr. Selma Weiss, and Dr. Selma Weiss ended up dying in an insane asylum because they thought he was crazy about washing the hands, and, and that's how, oh, I wasn't up, okay. And so it was kind of a, that is a great story of how we don't believe what we don't see. Right, yeah, yeah. thank what you. Do with this? Thank you, this is my great husband, Dr. Marcus Ford, so. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I have that story in my hormone book because very critical that we do adopt this. So am I okay? Is yep. time? Okay. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, part of the difficulty of being a researcher and discovering all this and putting it all together, and it's like knowing the whole world doesn't know yet. So, you know, at the end of every day, I'm going, everybody needs to know. Everybody, just all my books have been this way. So it's so glad that you're here. So, um, I, uh-oh, are we going to have a problem? Oh. Okay, all righty. Anyway, yeah. So, um, so I've written, um, I've written uh, five books, and uh, two of them are on sunscreens. And that came about because I learned to scuba dive 50 years ago, and I got to see the great coral and watch it disappear into just white stone and uh, discovered that sunscreens kill it. 96 hours, it's dead. 
And so I wrote that book to try to save the coral of the world. Is it okay? Yeah. You're going okay. to have to pull function down. And that. Okay, great. Yeah. And then uh, I'm a hormone specialist, a menopause practitioner, and had written this book and actually came across the EMF because women were calling me from the San Francisco Bay Area because you got your smart meters, your electrical smart meters, way before we did in Southern California. And about eight years ago, I started, in, within weeks, I was getting all these calls from women in the San Francisco area, all saying the same thing. I've got these headaches. I can't sleep. I'm tired, irritable. And I must be premenopausal. And so I have a six-page profile I have them fill out. None of them were menopausal. And so I, I spoke to each one in depth, what's new, what's different, what's changed. It was the electrical smart meter going on the residence within weeks or months of these symptoms. So then I started investigating what else they could do and was, just became horrified. And that's why I became uh, my book, EMF Freedom, Solutions for the 21st Century Pollution, because this is really pollution. So, oh, sorry, function, that. OK. <laughs> Um, well, this one uh, shows almost all of it. Um, I came across this ad. Uh, what do I do? It doesn't show. Um, this is an ad that was in Time magazine in 1947. And it said, DDT is good for me. And uh, it says, exhaustive scientific tests have shown that it's a benefactor for all humanity. Uh, that we need it for health, comfort, safety, uh, more comfortable homes, protecting our families. Put it in your kids' lunchbox and put it on your windowsills. Uh, so, and this is kind of where we're at with the EMF. Um, because 25 years later, the USA banned it. And it's now in almost every fetus that's born, the a derivative of it, a, a DDE. So, and uh, detectable in still 5 to 10% of us. So, it did cause infertility, low birth weight, developmental delay. And so, here we are still being impacted by it, 20, you know, even though they banned it in 25 years. But this is the same thing that's happening with EMF. It, it really is. Um, now we're seeing these ads for beneficial for all humanity, right? Because, gee, you can't live without all these gadgets, the smart homes, the smart appliances, um, the smart cars. So, but I think that these ads should be like the pharmaceutical ads, where they tell you how great this drug is and what it'll do for you, except that it might cause. And so what I see is that it may cause, these are the symptoms. Uh, that top one is headaches, vertigo, skin rashes. This is my menopause practices now, all these symptoms. These are the people who are finding me that are sick with all of this. It really is electromagnetic radiation sickness. Uh, the, the dizzy vertigo um, and heart palpitations. And people are getting pacemakers instead of realizing if you get away from the radiation, the heart palpitations go away. So this is how our ads should be. And it should also include, and may result in, autism, Alzheimer's, MS, uh, obesity, allergies, cancers. There's no doubt about the cancers. I, I give hour-long talks at cancer conventions and describe, it takes an hour to describe all the changes that lead to cancer from, from the electromagnetic radiation. So in the miscarriages, animals in the wild are miscarrying because we're radiating the entire planet, all, all life forms. So I get these calls. I consult literally all over the world. I've consulted in all 50 states. People find us who are sick, haven't been able to work in one, two, three, five years, because uh, they can't be around computers, had to move out of their homes because of the smart meters, um, tried to get in a car. They say, I've gone all over the United States trying to find a place that's free of the radiation. And they call a year later and say, there's nowhere free of radiation. And that's been the. You know, it, the cell phone companies said, we're going to cover the entire nation, and they have. So, but they call, these new phones are very powerful, 
way more powerful than what's been allowed by the FCC. And they'll call and they say, my hand's burning, tingling, numb. Um, so, and this is their answer all the time. I had no idea. I didn't know. I never heard. Because these are being sold without the warnings, without the warnings that these are toxic to our health. So I'd like to include the electromagnetic uh, spectrum because it's important. Uh, you, don't, you don't have a clicker, do you? Or, or, a, or, a, or a, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, that's okay, yeah, that's okay. Um, so we started out years ago with 50 and 60 hertz frequency for regular electricity. And I've been able in my research to uncover that electricity caused a raise in cancer. Our cancer rates went from eighth cause of death to second cause of death within 10 years of electrifying the nation. So electricity really does cause the cancer. And then we've moved up the spectrum, radio, TV, and now we're up in the radar range. So microwaves are 2.4 gigahertz. That's in the radar range. All of our Wi-Fi is up in the radar range. The new 5G is going to be in the radar range. And we have lots of sailors who have been harmed on ships from the radar on the ships. So we already know that uh, this is a bad range uh, for us to be exposed to. This is fun. This is like learning a whole new computer. This <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I like to include. It seems to be cut off at the bottom. Yeah, that yeah. Doesn't... Oh, oh, that's very good. Yeah. Okay. okay. You can still read it, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I like to include a picture of what the smart meters look like. I get a question because we were all supposed to receive a letter saying we were going to get a smart meter installed. 90% of the people who find us never knew the smart meter was installed. They get a knock on the door or come home and it's changed in their yard. And so on the left-hand side is the analog. That's the old safe uh, electrical meter. And then on the right-hand side, the digital readout is the microwave. This is 2.4 gigahertz, exact same frequency as the microwave oven. And it's pulsing multiple times a minute, 24 hours a day and it's really harming us because the pulsing is what breaks the DNA. So they say that this is non-ionizing. I don't think I can go backwards, right? I don't know. Okay. So, so over on the right-hand side is the ionizing, the X-ray and nuclear, and they think that this is safe because it's non-ionizing. But when you're pulsing the DNA like that, it still breaks the DNA just not as quickly as the ionizing. So it's very damaging. So, and then the promises of 5G, faster, more responsive gaming, that's what we all need, right? More responsive gaming, but um, they say they wanna push the 5G because you're not gonna get uh, driverless cars. So, and that concerns me because we got, I spoke in Dallas and we drove there and we got lost in San Antonio. And uh, we were trying to find an address and we realized where we were didn't seem to relate to what we had been told. And then our cell phone, our maps app kept saying, uh, page not found, page not found, page not found. And I'm sitting there listening to it going, what are you gonna do if you've got a driverless car with no steering wheel? I, I just, if the computer does that, and now they're making pilotless airplanes. Have you seen the pictures of them? They're making them in Germany. I, I can't imagine getting on a pilotless airplane. So uh, it uses a lot of different bands, but it is up in the uh, 6 to 100 gigahertz range. And they have to make them closer because they're shorter, shorter uh, wavelengths. But uh, they're also investigating 6G, 7G, and HG. Uh, so are you familiar with why 5G? That 1G was the first generation, 2G, three generation, two, two generations, three Gs. 5G is the fifth generation. So, and they're even working past that. So the 5G countries, uh, Switzerland, South Korea, China, Japan, Australia, and us, I was amazed at how many 5Gs are laid out already in Switzerland. Really incredible. Uh, 
companies are making this 5G cell phones. Um, I helped a woman who, we live in Irvine and there was a company manufacturing the 5G phones. They have been manufacturing for quite a while. And she'd been working there and she found us because she was so sick. She was working in the factory making the 5G phones and she became so sensitive. She had to quit work, but we got her going again. So all the cities, this is changing rapidly. Uh, all of the carriers, AT&T, they're installing it and then going ahead with more um, than Sprint and T-Mobile and uh, Verizon. And Verizon wants to promise nationwide by 2020, the entire, which is, we're here. So um, it, it's gonna be everywhere. But the biological harm created by this is just incredible. It's impacting every cell of our body. And it's polarizing, and that's why it's more damaging to our bodies, to our biological field. Um, it gets the cells oscillating in parallel planes, and it's, and it's this oscillation that creates more problems. And it also opens up our ion gates in our cells, and so our ion distribution and balance is no longer correct inside of our cells. Uh, but they do create oxidation. So we're being oxidized. Uh, it creates reactive oxygen species and free radicals, hurts the mitochondria, harms our cell membranes, harms our DNA, and leads to abnormal cell division, definitely leads to cancer. I was very glad to hear, because there's no doubt about that it causes brain cancer. I saw that research 30 years ago when I first started researching. No doubt, cell phone brain <clears throat> cancer. And uh, I was glad to hear Robert Kennedy Jr. say, my Uncle Ted died from using a cell phone. His brain cancer was definitely from his cell phone. Um, and then car electronics. I looked all over for research that would show putting a person in a hybrid or electric car. What would happen? I couldn't find it. I, I couldn't find it anywhere. But somebody did put platelets inside a car with all the electronics, all the sensors. And in 30 minutes, all the platelets are oxidized. So our entire body's getting oxidized sitting inside these cars. I've had so many calls, can't get in a car with GPS, can't get in a rental car, it's got, I just, I get so sick. So we can't see the oxidation that's happening, but this is oxidation, it's very, clear and easy to see. So this is happening inside every single cell of our body from these things. So the canaries, I'm a canary, uh, is showing that these radiations are harming us. Um, when smart meters went into our neighborhood, even by then, we're in Southern California, even by then, the judge ruled it can't be mandatory. So we opted out, got our neighbors on both sides to opt out. So when they started putting them in the neighborhood, I thought, hey, I'm, I'm cool. Nearest one way across the street, way behind our backyard. And uh, in four days, I had a rash on my ankle. In a week, it was all over my leg. In a month, it was head to toe. Itching blood all night and became allergic to every food. Couldn't eat. When I started reacting to organic cucumbers, I quit eating. I was a lot skinnier than I am now because I've solved the problem. <laughs> and now I love eating and I'm eating. But, um, but uh, it, I just was really surprised that the smart meter way across the street and permeating our whole neighborhood could take me down like that. I became reactive to everybody's cell phone. I wouldn't be able to be here. I would feel every, every one of your cell phones like a knife in my body. Uh, walk around the neighborhood, walk past the, the electrical smart meter and feel a knife from that meter. Um, I went down to the beach to try to ground and get away and feel good, because I would swell up like a poison pup and go down to the beach, lay there, 30 minutes, I'm back down to normal size. And um, so I was down at the beach one day at a place that had been safe. And it was in the middle of winter, cold, windy. Oh man, it was, it was really a brutal day. But I was determined to ground because I knew that was the only way my body was functioning. It's before I found these products that we're going to talk about. Um, and I'm laying there and I'm feeling all these knives in my body and I'm going, there's nobody here. 
how can I be feeling these knives? So I went up, and it's a state park with a bunch of cabins. And they had put electrical smart meters on these cabins the day before. Because I went and talked to the manager and goes, those weren't here the day before yesterday. So they had put them in. And so it was a bank of all the smart meters for all these cabins. And that was a long way from the beach. So I was feeling all of them in my body. So what's happening? How is that? Good. That turned out pretty good. Um, so this is a rat that was exposed to one cell phone for two hours. One cell phone. And at a power far less than what the FCC allows. The FCC allows 1.6 <coughs> watts per kilogram. This cell phone only had 120 milliwatts per kilogram. And all those dark spots on the bottom slide are dead brain cells. Wherever the, the blood-brain barrier leaked, it killed the brain cells inside. And this is happening to our gut. Uh, same thing, the, the tight junction cells in the brain, tight junction cells in the gut. So we're getting these holes. That's why in 30 days of the smart meters going in, I couldn't eat anything because my gut was leaking that much. And I knew I had made antibodies to all the food way back when I was poisoned with mercury 20 years ago. So when I started reacting, I realized what it was. Um, so this is kind of hard to see. It's a little small, but you put a cell phone, <coughs> expose the brain, the oxidation that's going on, it kills the nerve cells in the brain. So this is definitely happening. We are in a world of hurt on this planet. And these researchers found that antioxidants relieve this risk. And then the other problem is that all our cell membranes, all our protective cell membranes, are no longer protecting us. It's like they're sieves now. I like it to we're being machine gunned by these radiations. They now have all these holes in the cell membrane, so they leak. And so those of us who have things like mercury in our body, you put the holes in it from the EMF, and then the mercury gets in, and the good stuff gets out. So we no longer are these protected areas in our brain, in our gut, and in every cell. And the researchers on this said that there is so much damage to the cells that there's definitely Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism, all the neurodegenerative diseases. So the Alzheimer's is increasing so rapidly. They're saying by 2060, a quarter of Americans will be Alzheimer's. So when we get there, they require so much work. It's just really, uh, you know, we really need to stop this before we get there. The other problem is our immune system. It's really harming our immune system. Our Th1, Th2, these need to be in balance. And uh, if they're not in balance, we can't fight bacteria, uh, viruses. We can't, we can't deal with the mold. You know, mold is affecting us so much more. Not only is the EMF making it uh, more like strong, but um, it's also preventing us from being able to deal with it. So, and then also it increases our TH17, which is associated with a poor clinical outcome with breast cancer. And then the energy, the lack of energy. Um, it destroys our ATP. So this is 900 megahertz uh, for only 30 minutes and a loss of 27% of our ATP, and our ATP is our gasoline. So we are losing that, and that's why people find me. They're just exhausted. Uh, insomnia, it really destroys our melatonin. Um, the exposure, it really decreases, and melatonin's really important for us. It's what allows us to get to sleep and be in a deep sleep to, so we can repair. And uh, melatonin is more than just sleep. It definitely acts as an antioxidant. It helps us with the hypoxia, and I'll show you more of why we're, uh, we're all lack of oxygen. Um, so we really need our melatonin. And then the other thing is that when they sleep restrict mice, they find that their mitochondria are deprived, uh, are harmed just from sleep restriction. So we're not able to sleep. I get so many calls, people, I haven't slept in months. 
months. They're just miserable. And so just their lack of sleep is harming our mitochondria. And uh, the EMF causes a loss of the cell membrane, the inner membrane of the mitochondria, and uh, damages the DNA. It damages the mitochondrial DNA. It damages the body DNA. And these researchers said that the sperm, the man carries the cell phone in his pocket, it damages the DNA in the sperm. And if the sperm fertilizes the egg before it has a chance to repair the DNA, I mean, one of the reasons I became a clinical laboratory scientist because I'm in awe of our body, we can repair. We can repair our DNA. But if the sperm uh, combines with the egg before it has a chance to repair that DNA, after the first is division, there's no ability to repair that DNA. So they're thinking that some of the childhood problems that we're seeing is from the father, from the sperm that was uh, damaged before it conceived uh, the egg. So, and the mitochondria, all these mitochondrial dysfunction diseases, there's no doubt that the EMF is harming our mitochondria. And this is the, we're seeing an increase in all these diseases today, all of them. And then when we're talking about increasing the, hmm. so anyway, th this is 2G and 3G. You can't see the rest of the title. But when you look at the liver of chick embryos, you can see the increased damage from just going from 2G to 3G. And now we've been in 4G and now thinking about going to 5G. So definitely increased damage to our tissues. And then this is um, testic testicular cells and uh, really causing harm with the sperm. And this is 4G. So it's going to be a long time before there's any studies released about 5G. The other thing that's really important, microwaves work by exciting the water, by getting into the water. And we're 70% water. And now here we're being bombarded with all these smart meters that are exact same frequency microwave oven when we're 70% water. So we are, I, I did an international radio show, could not believe the number of people in America along the Mexican border. I heard from California and Mexico, Arizona, Texas, all these people calling me along that border saying, I feel like I'm burning up. I feel like I'm just being burned up inside. And they think it's because there's extra strong towers along the Mexican border. And this makes sense because it is a microwave frequency. So I'm going to switch to sunscreens because these are oxidizing us also. Uh, this is uh, the penetration into the skin from UVB and UVA. Uh, and that's the ultraviolet that we're, all the sunscreens are supposed to protect from. And then we have the visible. The visible is 49%. Ultraviolet's 4%. 4% of the entire spectrum, visible, and then near infrared, 47%. And you can see how much deeper those rays go. So we're sitting in the sun. We've cut the red warning light. We've cut the sunburn. So we're no longer getting out of the sun when we've used up all of our antioxidants. And we're sitting in there in 47% near infrared. And that's going in and causing melanoma and skin cancers. And there's nothing they can do about this. We attended an international dermatology conference about 12, 15 years ago. And I got very scared because they were talking about chemicals that would block the near infrared. And I'm going, you, how can you possibly try to do that? Because they realized that they weren't solving the melanoma problem. And so the proof that it's all wrong is this is what the incidence of melanoma since sunscreens were introduced. So if it, they worked, this would not be happening, this increase of, of the uh, melanoma. <coughs> so, and it's because it's entirely wrong, because the near infrared is causing these. The, um, so all the FDA approved chemicals are bad. 
If it has an SPF value, do not get it. Uh, they're either hormonally active, very active, very anti-testosterone, uh, cause the fish to be intersex, and look what's happening to our kids. Our kids don't know if they're boys or girls. And that one hormone, they, the fish actually, the testicle materials in the ovarian compartment, the ovarian materials in the testicle compartment, and they call the fish intersex, and the fish even quit breeding because they don't know what they are. So that's the uh, hormone disruptors. And then the zinc and titanium dioxide, which just makes me sick that they're saying this is kid safe. It is not kid safe. It is just... It just makes me so upset. I even talked to people who are saying this, uh, who've been researching, and I said, they are not safe. And they said, well, we're just going to disagree. And I, I said, how can you say this? And uh, the answer was, well, we're not saying they're safe. We're just saying they're safer than the endocrine disruptors. And, and, and I'm, how can you play semantics with our kids' lives? It's just really because, <laughs> hello. At least there's still life out there. That's a, oh my God. So, um, but the zinc and titanium dioxide, guess what they do? They destroy my mitochondrial function. They are harmful to our DNA and cause abnormal cell division. So, and doctors doubt that the sun causes melanoma and that sunscreens prevent it. Uh, it's definitely... There's no doubt about it. Then, um, because in their studies, sunscreens failed to protect against melanoma and failed to protect against basal cell carcinoma. And yet they're selling multi-billion dollars around the world, destroying all the water because it's destroying all marine life. Destroys the coral, destroys the phytoplankton. The titanium and zinc destroy the phytoplankton. So we're destroying the bottom of the food chain with a titanium and zinc that they say is zinc safe, it is uh, kid safe, and they're saying it's reef safe. So <laughs> that makes no more sense either. So, um, And it's now ubiquitous, it's in our water, and it's now in 96% of Americans' blood, even those who've never used sunscreen because it's in our water. There's no way to get it, and it's in our food. Um, so, and 85% of Swiss, <coughs> milk sample, uh, you know, breast milk samples. So our babies are drinking it. But, oh wow, this kind of, kind of weird. Anyway, um, they're saying that the nanomaterials of the zinc titanium and the sunscreen filters are contaminating everything and causing all of these problems. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can kind of read some of those. But this is what's happening to us. We are being harmed on such a level. We were not meant to be exposed to these kind of chemicals. So the other problem is that the, when they're mixed with uh, chemicals, with uh, the chlorine in the pools, they make trihalomethanes, and those lead to bladder and intestinal cancer. So we've got our kids swimming in this toxic soup with poisonous chemicals that uh, can cause cancer, harm the reproductive system, as well as cause a liver, and kidney, and nervous system problems. So this is what gets me, because they say, well, you don't absorb the zinc or titanium. Uh, all those black dots are titanium dioxide inside the cell, inside the nucleus of the cell. And uh, they do cause oxidation. So that's why I combine this, because the EMF is causing oxidation, oxidase, o oxidizing our bodies. These sunscreens are causing the same problem. And they're found in the lungs, in blood, lymph nodes, uh, in the brain. And it continues rising in the brain. And the sprays, it goes straight up into the brain uh, when you inhale it. So uh, the other thing that really concerns me is that when they gave pregnant mice titanium dioxide and then they measured the pups after they were born, 
and they measured them every day, and in 21 days, they found 1,887 genes altered. Altered. So this is what's happening to our kids. And these are genes that are associated with brain development, with cell death, with oxidative stress, and how to deal with oxidation, and with our mitochondria, and with inflammation and neurotransmitters. And these researchers are saying these, there will be psychiatric disorders by the time they're adults because there's so much damage. So it definitely affects the mitochondrial membrane. There's no doubt about that. And um, it kind of, can you, yeah. And both the zinc and titanium dioxide affect the mitochondria. So our poor energy factories are really being hit by this. And this is too bad. Um, so uh, people try to say, well, we're not nano, we're micro, we're natural. And uh, this is the size of the titanium and zinc in the powder that's used for the sunscreens. And so on uh, the titanium, 75% are nano, and on the zinc, 33% are nano. They can't. It is so tiny. It's one five thousandth diameter of human hair. It is so tiny they cannot separate these out. There's no way to get non-nano. You're going to have nano in with the micro. So um, the. Uh, I hope this is okay for you. Um, what they did was they did a study of the micronized. Non, nano is less than 100 nanometers. And so micronized is over 100 nanometers. So they did a study to see if indeed the micronized was safer. So they did a study with 160 and 33 nanometers. They found the same damage. So to say that we're non nano and we're safe, it causes the exact same damage. Increased cell division in the esophagus and in the colon, uh, increased defective sperm, and increased death in the testicles. But the micro caused DNA damage and abnormal cell division in the bone marrow. And the nano caused damage in the bone marrow and the liver. So to say that uh, it's safe is, is just not right. So, the zinc oxide particles appear in the liver, kidney, and lung in 24 hours. And, uh, and then in seven days, it appears in the brain. And then with more time, even though you quit using it, it still keeps building up in the brain. So it's in our body, and it just finally gets, finds its way to the brain. And this is what really gets me is, I don't know if, I guess it turns out OK, is they're saying this is safe, you know? It, it's, it's um, and to use spray, uh, and spray on your kids. So the other thing is the FDA has approved titanium dioxide to be additive to food. So it's in our white frosting, it's in white pudding. I talked to a pregnant woman and uh, advised her to look at all the labels and make sure they don't have titanium dioxide. And the next time I saw her, she goes, I was at Whole Foods, and I got white pudding, and it's got titanium dioxide. So uh, I'm telling everybody, read every label. But it's not only in the white foods. It's in toothpaste. It's in candies. It's in makeup. Um, and it's in the fish. And then it bioaccumulates. So the larger the fish, the more sunscreen chemicals you get in it uh, that you're eating. So the other problem is that it blocks your ability to make vitamin D. And so it, it's harming our whole body. We need vitamin D. When we went to cities and kids weren't in the sun, rickets became prevalent. And then they finally figured out, gee, we need to get these kids in the sun. And now that everybody's covering up and they're not getting vitamin D, rickets is back in America and in uh, Europe, in England. So we really need it. We need it for our bones. We need, and it's anti-cancer. So 
175 country study. They found people that had more sunshine, uh, it higher, you know, it, it more radiation for where they were living, had less multiple myeloma, which is cancer of the wet blood cells. So, so we need the sunshine to prevent the cancers. So, and the people that have been doing the research said titanium dioxide is a morally unacceptable societal experiment that we shouldn't even be using it whatsoever. So because it's not only, um, it, it changes its character. It's like a different animal when it gets down to the nano size. So now solutions, because um, I don't want to just leave you, leave you with a good heavens. Afraid to go out there, right? <laughs> so, but uh, there's a lot of laboratory tests that are, can test for the inflammation that's created in your body. So those are available. And then um, the best thing to do for electromagnetic radiation is to reduce your exposure um, and protect yourself from the sources you can't eliminate. And then the sunscreen alternative is really eating it. Uh, eat your antioxidants. Because this is all oxidation damage, you eat the antioxidants. I was amazed in this, in this book, I've got over 800 references in this book, a whole chapter. There was so much research already done, and this is uh, eight, 10 years old already. So much research of giving somebody low, medium, and high amounts of an antioxidant, put them in the sun, it's a real simple test. And they really do protect. I've had several very white Irish women uh, tell me, the one woman said that she, when she'd go to Mexico, she'd blister in 15 minutes in the Mexican sun. And she says, look at I just got back from two weeks in Mexico, ate a high antioxidant diet, look at didn't even turn color. So it really is an answer. I've gotten this over and over and over again. So we can eat uh, our protection. And I put Food, glorious food. Remember that song from Annie? <laughs> so, because if we eat our food, if we eat these antioxidants, you know, we're going to be able to prevent the oxidation from the electromagnetic radiation and the oxidation from the solar radiation. So, one of the studies is um, the EMF from the cell phone causing oxidation in the testicles and giving the uh, giving a garlic powder and it stopped the oxidation in the testicles. So, but do have it be organic. Um, we published Dr. Stephanie Seno's book on this. Her book, uh, this book is, we like it because it's saying it's all of the above is the problem. It, it is um, sunscreens, it is. She and I connected because of her work in vitamin D on, in my sunscreen book, but it is the vaccines, it is the, pesticide glyphosate, and um, the GMOs and the EMF. And, uh, and it, once you read the detail of what glyphosate does uh, to your body, you really don't want to put anything in your mouth that's not organic. So, and all the polyphenols, all the bright colors, so the reds, the purples, um, all of these can help with the oxidation damage. So. Um, and I've got a whole chapter there listing them all. And then as far as EMF, as far as shielding, this has been an interesting journey because uh, when we first started having problems uh, with the, my EMF problem, uh, we were taught, you know, what about shielding? And lately they've been realizing that they suggest avoidance rather than shielding. Because if you shield, you're not only shielding the EMF, you're shielding the Earth's energy. And so I've had people come to me crawling because they were told to uh, paint their bedroom with all the shielding paint or their house. And they get so weak, they can barely function because they're blocking the Earth's energy. And so these researchers are saying that it needs to be combined with a generator that's going to emit the natural atmospheric uh, resonance. So, 
and then on the devices, the EMF devices. So 15 years ago, I knew I was sensitive. I'd walk in a Wi-Fi building, dizzy vertigo, walk outside, be fine. Walk back in, dizzy vertigo. So 15 years ago, I started buying all these things on the market that say these work. So all of these I have bought. Um, none of them worked. All I did was get sicker and sicker. Uh, the only ones that did work were the harmonizers. And once the harmonizers worked, I was like, wow. I, I was back in public in two days with these harmonizers. I no longer felt the knives. I wouldn't even be standing here giving this talk. And I was back on the cell phone and computer. I couldn't use a cell phone or computer anymore. I'd get itchy, bloody sores up my arms. It, it was just heinous. I had to quit work. Um, so the dots that we have, they're energized with phi, P-H-I, uh, which is our golden ratio uh, energy. And so what they do is when they put it on the cell phone, it actually alters the radiation uh, to be phi, to be what's good for us, harmonious with us. And this helps me understand. Um, I was asked to do a uh, menopause seminar in Colorado Springs about 12, 15 years ago. And I've been at sea level my whole life. I was born up here in this area. And um, we got up there, and I couldn't breathe. I was like, oh, oh. It, was, it was heinous. And they're at 7,900 feet, and I thought it was just the high altitude. And uh, so I, uh, there was two, uh, I, I didn't even associate that this is the, was the problem, that my red blood cells were clumping together. And uh, a couple years ago, there were two medical seminars that I wanted to go to. So I bought a box of oxygen. You know, I, I'm not going to feel like that again. I'll just bring the oxygen to, to breathe it. I got there, and I had no problem. No problem whatsoever. Because I realized 15 years ago, I didn't know my red blood cells were clumping together and couldn't deliver oxygen. So this is what happens. Uh, this is the headache. I've gotten so many calls, I get a headache every time I get on my cell phone because the red blood cells start clumping together and then they can't deliver oxygen. It's the same as a high altitude headache. Not enough oxygen in the, in the brain. So, and then our smart dots that go on the phone, uh, this is the same person, same cell phone, uh, with an hour, using it for an hour. Can you explain the smart dots? What do they do? They actually are, they're, a very mild magnet, like the back of your credit card, that magnet holds your credit information. This magnet holds energy information. It holds our golden ratio energy, 1.618, that vibration. And so it alters what's coming off the phone to 1.618. So it filters. makes it, 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 it works as the frequency. When that frequency hits this frequency, it raises it to this frequency. So um, it's been the most worrying thing I've done in my 50 years in the medical field. I've had so many people call and say, you saved my life. You saved my life. Um, this was done by Dr. Charles Krebs. We met him. He's an energy doctor. We met him at an energy conference. It was incredible. And uh, he did this. Is that OK? Is it? Yeah, went squirrely, yeah. So anyway, um, I couldn't understand when I was reacting to people's cell phone. I'd be standing next to somebody and I'd say, I'm feeling your cell phone, and they go, it's off. But this is, he measured the amount of stress on the body and the energy meridians. And this is the amount of stress when the cell phone's in off. So it's still impacting our body, even in off. And then this is... Standby, and this is sending and that's receiving. So a lot of stress on the body. This is other people's technology. This was our cell dot that uh, we made about 20 years ago. This company is about 20 years old. And so this was their original dot. And, but they've improved it for all the new, more powerful phones. And this is our new dot on the phone. Hardly any stress on the body whatsoever, which is why I can use the phone now. And People who find us can use it. And then this slide helps me understand why I feel everybody's so fun like a knife. Because we're not only getting holes in every cell membrane, we're getting holes in our energy field. So the top 
slide shows all these holes so the radiations can go right through to the body. The bottom slide is the use of R dot technology for two days. And the more solid and uniform this, this energy field around here. Um, and it helps me understand why in two days I could go back out in public and not feel nice and, and get back into society again. So uh, this is a bio dot. That's what I wear. Um, it restores and rebalances your own energy. Um, we make it in a baby mat because babies, I'm so concerned about them. So they can sleep with it and ride with it in the car seat because the cars are so toxic with all the radiation. Uh, we have them in all different ways to wear them. And uh, wow, this got really screwed up. Wow. Well, if you all just lean this way. <laughs> um, so uh, these were ninth graders in Denmark who were sick at school. And they'd go home, they'd feel fine. They'd go back to school, they'd feel sick. But they didn't have Wi-Fi in their homes yet. So they designed this experiment. And they put garden crest seeds in the room with the Wi-Fi router and in a room away from the Wi-Fi router. And uh, they won a, an award, won money and everything. But um, our dot, our Wi-Fi dot on the Wi-Fi router, we were able to grow the seeds right in front of the Wi-Fi router as opposed to being dead. So it, all life is being impacted by these. Uh, and then the water dot, since we're 70% water, our water dot takes the EMF and printing out of the water in one to two minutes. So I wear an aqua dot, um, keep it on my drinking cup, put it on filters. So it does take the EMF out of there. And then the tropin spray, um, this is what saved my food allergies. Because I put the slide in here again about all the holes in the blood brain barrier. Those are the same holes in the gut lining. So 20 years ago, I was poisoned by a dentist. Almost died that night from being poisoned in the chair from mercury. And I immediately could smell everything in the house. I still have the smell sensitivity, um, so and I couldn't I gradually couldn't eat anything. I ate carrots and potatoes for a year because I had so many food allergies from the leaky gut from the mercury poisoning. So it took me years to heal my gut. Uh, finally, got it healed. I was able to eat again, but that's why when the smart meters went into the neighborhood, uh, I got all these holes in my intestinal lining again. And 30 days, couldn't eat anything again. And this tropin spray is a secretagogue. It's all the neurotransmitters and amino acids your pituitary needs to make and release your own human growth hormone. And the human growth hormone is what heals the, the holes in the, in the tight junction cells. So within weeks, I was eating again. And so I call it heaven, because I love to eat. So. Um, what? How does that spray work? What? How does the spray work? It, it's neurotransmitters and amino acids, so your own body can make your own human so you growth spray hormone. It in your mouth. You spray it in your mouth, sorry, yeah. Yeah, you spray it at night uh, just before you turn over, go to sleep. So, grounding, grounding is really important. You know, we have these dots, but grounding, these dots help prevent more damage, but um, it's really important to repair the body. Every cell in the body has been impacted. And grounding repairs of these cells. It's really, uh, it's the one thing that saved me before I found this technology. I was spending five and six hours a day on the ground just to feel like I could function. And really important to wear natural fibers, cotton, linen, wool. Um, I buy the $19 Costco cotton beach towels and lay on the cotton beach towel and wear cotton clothes. And so we have these guidelines. Um, it's really important to try to get rid of your smart meter. In California, we can. You can call and say, I want to opt out. We do pay $10 a month for our gas and our water. <clears throat> Thank goodness our water company is 
So far, it's too expensive to switch to smart meters, so we're not being subjected to that. The states that have had gas, electric, and water for several years, um, are those people are very sick. They call me, they are very, very sick. So, um, so do try to get out of your, your meter. It's worth the money. It's the best health insurance you can buy. <clears throat> and try to convince all your neighbors. And then um, the cell phone, do keep it away from you, yeah, especially if you've got one you can't take the battery out of. We, we make sure we get uh, battery operated so we can take the battery out and make sure that it's really not on. So we do a lot of traveling as I speak at different medical conventions. And so we keep it in the car with the battery out because there's no pay phones anymore. You know? we, we were in Hawaii and we saw three pay phones in a row. And my husband goes, hey, get out. Let's get a picture because <laughs> they're, they're a vanishing breed. So and we can go back to wired everything. When, before I found these, my husband had a wireless mouse. And I couldn't go in his office. I'd get to the door, and I'd feel that wireless mouse. Like, you've got to get that out of here. So go back to wired mice um, <laughs> and uh, wired computers, wired everything. Uh, and, and it's all available. And keep your landline. Definitely keep your landline. Don't use your cell phone as your primary phone. And, uh, and then your sleep area. Remove all technology. I, if we can get the TVs out of the bedroom, that'll be a big help. I, it's mostly women who are having the symptoms. It, it, the other thing, it's not only the toxins in the body, it's the cuts in the body. I've had seven surgeries uh, before I found this. Uh, my hysterectomy scar, I'd sit at the computer for an hour and my hysterectomy scar would be red and just driving me crazy. Uh, so, because the radiations go in wherever the body was cut. So, uh, women have a lot of, had babies, and so they're more susceptible. And when it's the husband that's got the symptoms uh, and the wife doesn't, it, it, this is causing divorces because the one who's sensitive doesn't understand the one who is and thinks they're crazy. So I, this is on the third edition because I kept adding and rearranging so that they could hand it to their spouse or their doctor and say, I'm not crazy because the biochemical proof of all these symptoms is, is in this book. So, but if I ask a husband who's sensitive, have you had any surgeries? Oh yeah, I had my shoulder worked on. So it definitely makes us more susceptible. So do get everything out of your bedroom. We still turn our electricity off at night to the back part of our house where we sleep. Um, we started doing that before I found this. and. Um, because we had a biological building inspector inspect our house, and the main wiring for the house is right above our bedboard or headboard. So, so but we still turn off the electricity, rather than there's no re reason to uh, keep it on. But um, and do not drive a hybrid or electric. I am really um, the people who find me who are as sick as I was. When I really look at their health profile. A lot of them have been driving a hybrid or electric for a year, year and a half, and then they get these symptoms. So it, it's, it's really, we're, we weren't, they never did the study. We weren't meant to be put, we're electromagnetic. We weren't meant to be put into these hybrid and electric cars. We really weren't. So, but uh, more radiation is planned. We, we, we do know that, that's for sure. And uh, do get to every politician you know, city, county, federal, because they need to know. It, they are not presented with this information. I've seen the videos of what they're presented with. They're presented with the Pollyanna DDT is good for me. I mean, it, it, literally, they're not presented with the truth. And uh, so this is kind of a Reader's Digest condensed version of, of the damage that is being being caused. So we need, we definitely need to wake up our decision makers to the truth. And so, well, anyway, we're happy to assist you. Um, my husband has been 
with me uh, through all this, so he knows everything. He, uh, he helps publish these books and edit them. And uh, so, anyway, we definitely want to help everybody. It's, it's, it's just incredible how sick people are, and the doctors don't know how to help them. I, it's been an interesting journey of selling these for the last eight years and speaking at medical conventions. Uh, because eight years ago, the doctors were kind of ho oh, hum. But the last two, three, four years, when I get to those symptoms that I had, you can just see them sit forward, you know, because this is what they're seeing in their patients. And they come by our booth and go, Thank you for helping me understand the patients I haven't been able to help. So, and we have patients call and say, Thank you for telling my doctor about this because he really helped me now. So, so this is really important and if you know people spread this information I used to say tell everybody you know and they, tell 100 people because we need to spread this we really do because there's no need to suffer anymore um, and uh, like I said the divorces that people are just suffering like mad because uh, nobody understands this so so think oh and I want to say is it on the back of this one yes it is I will be speaking Saturday and Sunday at Liverware Expo that's going to be at the Hilton Bayfront at the San Francisco airport. So uh, it's a very interesting show, the Liverware. The, they've got a bunch of good people there. So I'll be speaking about all this, but in more detail in these two different lectures there. So I'd be glad to answer any questions. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Before we go on, I just want to say I, I want to take responsibility for why her slides didn't look quite right because um, this is the backup computer, and uh, anyway, they didn't quite kind of work. So hopefully, we'll be able to edit in some of the better slides when we uh, produce the video for this. Oh, and thank you. Okay. Appreciate that. So questions? Mm -hmm. Do you have problems with hearing aids, electronic hearing aids? I'm very concerned for you. I really am because any, any new electromagnetic radiation, but our dots can be cut so they can actually get put on, on the hearing aids. It, it's better than not. It really is not, yeah. Because you don't want that into your brain. Yeah, so. Can you um, talk about when you fly, all the radiation that you get exposed to when you fly? Cause you know, I'm a flight attendant, and I've read where I, that's how I think I got breast cancer, and that's and that where you get more radiation in a year than most radiation workers, and how we could protect ourselves. Against a absolutely. So, uh, when we first got this product line, um, I was in Hawaii. My sister lived there, and I was in Hawaii, and I was just talking to a woman who was swimming, and um, we started talking, and she wanted to do a menopause consult. And during the menopause consult, she was a flight attendant, and uh, she says, I'm not going to be able to reach retirement. I am so sick at the end of every flight. So we got her our starter kit, uh, which is one to wear, and then a set for her phone. And she, this is seven years later, and she is selling them to as many people as she can and all our fellow flight attendants. Yeah, she, and she's doing splendidly, really. So I'm sorry, what is she selling the Yes, yeah, the starter kit. It's a starter kit. It's. Do you have a starter kit out, Marcus? No. So uh, it, it's a starter kit that includes one to wear and then one for your phone. So, but this is all she started with, and now she's just a, a big proponent. She comes to the sh shows and helps us sell at our shows because she's, she knows it saved her life and her job. So... Yeah. I'm going to hold it up here. Maybe, oh, okay. maybe Eric will get a little oh, okay. Thank try you. to get a close-up shot of that. So yeah. my hand okay, thanks. Now I can't go around the mic to anybody. <laughs> I've, had, I've had other flight attendants who we've helped save their jo jobs too. So, okay. Okay. yeah, you, you are really being impacted. There's no doubt about it. Oh, I know that. And your uniforms are toxic. Yeah. Yeah. And all that uh, fire, <clears throat> uh, flame retardant. So... Um, I have a bunch of comments. Um, one comment would be, I'm always looking for good research on rouleau formation of live blood, and it's really hard to find. Um, but the 
question, the comment I have is that, you know, you have to ask yourself why are some people electro hypersensitive and some aren't. Um, so uh, that's a good question. Yeah. So that's a good question. Is that why are some people uh, like today? I did a home. I went to someone's home because she can't come to my office. Yeah. She's severely hypersensitive, and she has these symptoms like what you described with the, the stabbing. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. And, and that's a classic sign of uh, mycotoxin, mm -hmm. aflatoxin poison. That's what they call in medicine pathognomonic. Mm -hmm. So what pathognomonic means that um, you have this weird symptom, and it's only seen in like one particular <coughs> problem. So, um, so I'm working her up. I'm sending her off uh, for aflatoxins. What aflatoxins are, they're very small uh, chemicals that are both hydrophilic and lipophilic, water and fat soluble. So they love to sit in membranes and they crowd the membranes out. And about 25% of the general population cannot get rid of, cannot form antibodies to get rid of them. So they're just accumulating membranes. And so there's two groups, three groups of people, one that are hypersensitive, the other ones that are toxic, Randy? and then the, Check the and, and then the overlap, the Venn diagram. <coughs> and, and so the problem is that most people that are electro and chemical hypersensitive are actually have something else going on. And it's most commonly something like aflatoxin poison or or something called a uh, Lyme related disease like Bartonella and so um, people that are electro hypersensitive or chemical hypersensitive need to be worked up for these things because they're so common and there's a lot of new research and what I do is I take care of these people that are very sick and I just don't get them mitigating their environments I find out why they are electro hypersensitive and treat that. Mm -hmm. Well, and so so that would be my comment. Yeah. Well, well, one of the things that I know, because I can clearly know when the dentist poisoned me with mercury, I, I know the hour, the minute, and from then on, my body changed because of the mercury poisoning. I almost died. I was close to death for over a month, and in bed almost a year. That's common. And, it was it was heinous, but it was immediate sensitive to every smell, immediate sensitive to food. I mean, so I know the mercury caused that. That's for sure. And so, in the people who find me, half of them, so many people have mercury fillings and they vaporize all the time, and so a lot of people have the mercury poisoning. So half of the people who find me are have a history of mercury poisoning, and a third of them, pesticide poisoning. You, you may want to check your urine for aflatoxins, and also get a hygienics blood test for tick-borne disease. Well, 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 the thing is that the electromagnetic radiation makes you more susceptible and unable to fight this. And so, you know, Lyme disease is really interesting because in my research, I found out because the symptoms of Lyme disease are exactly the same as electromagnetic radiation sickness. Exactly the same, line for line. And uh, in the 1960s, in Lyme, Connecticut, they built a huge nautical navigation tower to blast out to the ocean-going ships. In the 1970s is when they started getting all these weird symptoms. So they called it Lyme disease because they had no idea. But 10 years of that huge tower blasting those people would make sense that they are now having these symptoms. And when we get you know, this on them, we had a doctor refer us uh, to a patient who couldn't come into the office because she was so sick. And we got her this. And uh, she got so well, she can now go into the doctor's office. And the doctor came to our booth at a medical show. And she goes, you know what? I don't have any symptoms. But you made such a dramatic change in my patient just with your bio dot. I'm just going to buy one. So that was Sunday. She calls Friday night. She goes, I had no idea I was so tired. 
I had no idea by Friday night I dragged myself to bed. I have energy tonight because I'm wearing this. Also, she said, my handwriting I thought was just doctor's handwriting. But she said my handwriting improved. And that really is one of the symptoms of the impact of electromagnetic radiation. So there's that overlay of hypersensitivity and toxicity. And I'm just saying it's very likely that you have mold toxicity. Well, it, well this, I'm this, just making a suggestion. Yeah, but this makes you. Point of view and blah, blah, this blah. makes you more susceptible it's to the mold. You can't fight it. That's that's the problem. It, it's making the mold seem like a much bigger problem than it needs to be. If people handle the EMF, they're much more sensitive. You know, it, it it's all of the above. Our, really, our answer is it's all of the above. It really is. There's yeah. no two ways around it. And that's what the problem is, because we're now in such a toxic soup, you know, no matter where we go. I just want to, um, if I can comment, because I really agree with both of you. Mm -hmm. I have had cancer three times. I lived in a toxic mold house. I've had Lyme. I think people totally underestimate mold and Lyme. But I've become much more, I'm a canary, like you. Um, it's hard for me to be in here right now. Part oh, really? of the problem is there's a lot of mold oh, in this wow. room. Oh, wow. OK. Um, so it's hard for me. But I will say I think part of what I became much more sensitive because of the body burden for all of us. You know, mm -hmm. There's an analogy. We're all born as an empty barrel. And mm -hmm. as we age, right, we're exposed to all these things, and the barrel becomes full. And I believe that what happens when your body becomes so full, it starts spilling over, and then you become even more sensitive. And that's what happened to me. Yeah. No, um, I and I'm totally a building agree. biologist, and I just want to say what you're saying about your bedroom. Your bedroom is your sanctuary, OK? You do whatever you can to shut things off. Pull the plug on your router at night, OK? It's not just about putting it in another room. It's still going through walls, mm -hmm. all right? And if you unplug your router, it doesn't erase your programs. You can put it, plug it right back in the morning when you put your coffee on and it's all reset. So there's, there's simple things that you can do, but I agree, avoidance. I agree with you, none of this paint in uh, mm. the rooms because mm. people don't realize it's there. <clears throat> then you have hot spots if people bring in a cell phone. So um, thank you for raising awareness. Yeah, I am very grateful. Uh, we know a doctor, he was a brilliant doctor, um, and uh, so he was sick over 15 years ago, and the only answer was a Faraday cage. Yeah. And he finally doesn't have a brain left because it just really, it's not enough energy if you're going to keep yourself in a cocoon like that. What is your position on the rife frequencies and the rife frequency generators? I haven't researched them. I, 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 so I, I really can't say. Yeah. And, and I don't want to. I do exhaustive research on anything I talk about, so I don't want to do that. I just haven't had time. So, yeah. Because a, a number of people amongst us have been using the rush frequency, the rush machine, and some of them are very powerful to kill Lyme disease and other, uh, you know, aggression on the body and. I am not quite sure how much progress we're making with this. It seems we're making some progress in, on some subject and not so much progress on others. And after all, those are frequencies that we run for hours. Uh, there is a question. Well, one of the things that we're seeing, uh, there's a whole a tremendous number of electronic machines and instruments that are being made for cure this, that, the other thing. It was an electronic instrument that uh, caused my mercury poisoning. It, was, uh, it caused my mercury poisoning. The dentist put infrared on my jaw. And it vaporized my mercury. Um, so, but it's a cumulative effect. You know, they put the, uh, the x-ray radiation, they put the dental, you know, the uh, Lead apron. lead apron, yeah, thank you, honey. Um, the lead on you in the dental chair because x ray radiation is cumulative. This is electromagnetic radiation. It's cumulative exactly the same way. And so we really need to all look at how much we're absorbing. 
um, because I don't believe in all these machines that they're doing, all these instruments that are adding more radiation to the body. We need to get away, we need to get grounded, we need to get away from it to allow our body to heal, uh, not to just add more. So I, I just, I, I'm very concerned, very concerned about all these instruments. And, and I know doctors who are buying these things and they develop intractable pain and they develop cancer and they're still using these machines and I truly believe the machines are what, what helped create it. You know, it, we weren't meant to be radiated like that, so. I just wanted to comment, um, like what you were saying about body burden. Mm -hmm. is we don't start out with an empty bucket though anymore oh, because it, oh, yeah, the babies, study yeah. that was done at cord blood, over 250 chemicals in, in the cord blood mm -hmm. of babies. I mean, so we're not even starting out with a clean slate anymore. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I, the autism problem is absolutely Bingo. huge. There is no two ways around it. Um, I was telling at dinner, I have an autistic grandson who is off the charts. And um, when she went to her high school reunion, two thirds of her classmates have the same type of autistic kid as, as my grandson, two thirds of them. And, and they had a cell tower on the school site. And now all these California schools, cell towers. I, I truly believe that that's what happened. His, his brain, his, there is absolutely no impulse control. It is virtually non-existent. And that's two thirds of her classmates, the same type of kid. So, and they're sitting there for four years with the cell tower and their ovaries are being cooked by the electromagnetic radiation. We are, we are harming ourselves on such a level that it's just astronomical. Yeah, you actually just answered some okay. of my question because um, I have a high schooler and college student, I mean, my, my kids. I noticed, I noticed a lot of them, they put the cell phone into the pockets, uh, into their right bra, right here, when they're going to the gym. Uh, I wonder if this kind of information can be taught to the, I just bring awareness to the teachers in the classroom because they're sitting in the classroom for seven hours with the Wi-Fi and they don't go out. They wear shoes with the, you know, uh, socks on. So they're not really grounded. So at home, sometimes I'll tell my kids to do so, but they think that I'm, ooh, you know, why would they have to release that energy out of their body? Stepping on the grass is so dirty. They don't like to have the dirt on their feet. <laughs> so... <laughs> Because they don't understand. I think that if the boy, if the kids, now nowadays we have this, you know, Facebook, all this stuff that multimedia. If how can we? I'm sure there are out there. Uh, how can we bring this awareness to every kids in the classroom so so they can have the so they understand. So the so the, if the voice coming from them will be so much more powerful, um, you know, so they start taking care of the body. Um, in terms of individually, what we're trying to do at our, our home, but at least it's a school wide. I know it might be something too naive. I know there's certain polit politics involved. You know, all the stuff that we talked about, chemtrail, na nanoparticle, but what can we do? At least the teacher are aware of that. I so they can start educating the kids or at least bring the awareness, awareness out there. To bring the Wi-Fi into the classroom is just, it's lunacy. It really is because it's impacting our kids it, it, on such a level. Um, I have a section on suicide in my book uh, because a girl was so sensitive in England and they had to get the Wi-Fi out of their house because she was so sensitive and she tried to tell the school and the school's answer was, well, there's just as many studies saying it's safe as they're saying it's not. And the girl wound up killing herself. And I totally understand it. I was at that point. I really, I was so miserable. I was, I just asked God to get me off the planet every day, every day, screaming about it. It was horrible. It, but it helps me understand because I've gotten so many phone calls. I want you to know up front I'm ready to kill myself today. Because once you react, there's nowhere to go. It, you can't find a place that's safe. So it, it is really, our kids are being really harmed. I've gone to two school districts. I walked into one school board and one of the men on the board says, oh, I know you, I've seen you on TV, you're, you're an expert. And I could not convince them to not do the, the, the. So I just want to um, 
really let everybody know um, I have been opposing 5G for the last two years. I've now switched and um, am working on legislative work and um, on building a coalition for safe school with technology. Um, we've approached Mark Berman just recently. Um, we've had a lot of success raising visibility, but it's the, the practices are coming. If anybody would like to join our coalition, that would be great. I can leave some business cards or, or whatnot, but um, that's exactly what we need to do. It's, it's education. So we've put together, yeah. um, with other people's help, best practices for safe technology in schools. And also you should be aware, Governor Newsom um, just approved AB 272 last July, and they're asking the schools to come up with uh, smartphone policies that will either ban or prohibit phones in <coughs> schools. That so that's going to get yeah. around. Well, that's happened in California now. Good. It's just a matter of getting out. Yeah. Um, but San Mateo High School is really one of the premier schools in our area. They've banned cell phones at the high school. Um, they're in their second year now. The Wall Street Journal was there last week. You know, there's lots, there's going to be a tidal wave. It's, you know, the one bad thing about, we know 5G is awful, but it has raised visibility and people are becoming more educated. Um, so I agree, it has to start with the children. And no, they won't listen to their mother. But they, they need to get back to textbooks instead of all the lessons on the computer. My, my grandson, um, it's all computerized. It's just, but he wears this, both my grandsons are wearing this. And uh, I want this to be a flame that the kids will go to school and say, my parents care about my brain because this will help protect the brain. And, and if we can get this message out, uh, because this is really important. It, 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 kids and high school teachers are getting cataracts because it's oxidation from the, the Wi-Fi in the classrooms. It, it's, it's, it's insane. It's so sad. Yeah, it is. Everyone thinks because we ever has a cell phone, you're safe. <laughs> right. No well, like I showed, they brought it out with, yeah. with no warning. You know, I, I love that DDT is good for me ad. I was just like, that, that's where we're at. It, it's insane. I have a switching gears. Um, can you, is there any research that's been done that would elucidate any of the polymorphisms that would make one more predisposed to? Well, that is a whole, uh, just a, a, that would be a week long class. I mean, it, it is just another whole floodgate opening because uh, yeah and but as far as sunscreens like changing DNA sunscreens alter the MTHFR right. oh. and, so, and, that, and so, so that's why I asked yeah. so any anybody who has uh, looked at William Walsh's work or you know and he's talking about over methylators and under methylators and how that is associated you know preterm and then you know carries forward in children who are anywhere on the spectrum between you know just your garden variety ADD and then all the way up to you know full-blown autism and other psychiatric disorders and so mm -hmm. that, that's why I was asking I mean I know that there are specific genes that are being you know elucidated for methylation but you know is there is there a specific constellation that is being looked at as being so if you have you know five out of you know ten of these you're more apt to be hypersensitive well right. can I just answer that sure, really simply sure. yeah. I have to have stuff real simple and I have that MTHFR mm -hmm. and you know your doctors you can talk about it more but what it boils down to is you're not detoxing right, no, so I'm, you back up so you got to figure out how to detox. So that, that's the bottom line. Teas, the comp teas, all of this. So I'm just, I'm just wondering, has there been a list that has been compiled yet? I, I've seen it, but I would not be able to access it right now. But I have seen it, yeah. But it, it, diet, you know, it's amazing because all that's happening, it all comes down to the same answers: diet, eating the high antioxidant foods, you know, uh, making them. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't do well as it gets later in the evening. <laughs> yeah, um, organic. And uh, exercise. I, I've been amazed at exercise is just really showing that it can help the body uh, repair. 
So, so it's all the same answers. It's just a question of doing them. So, um, yeah. Okay, a question way over here. Oh, okay. Um, remind you to please, when you speak in the microphone, like right yeah, like this right directly, yeah. and so right. it comes out really clear. Thanks. Uh, Hello. Is this work? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I guess I have two questions. Uh, the first. Because sort of concerns, so the chemical sunscreens are basically a whole, there's like a whole variety of them, and there's like older generation ones and newer generation ones. And do you, like, is most of the literature focused on like a subset of them, or is, is it pretty, pretty spread out across the different uh, types of chemical sunscreens? Or is there like some common underlying mechanism that causes them all to be like as a class harmful? Um, and uh, maybe I'll ask my second one after, <laughs> after the first. Uh, well, the, the thing that, that gets me is that they're all toxic chemicals, no matter what they choose. It's really amazing to me. So uh, that's the problem. It's just, I, I tell people don't get anything with an SPF value because it's a toxic chemical. It, in my research, I found red raspberry seed oil it has an SPF of 25 or 50, depending on the UV wavelength. Well, that's really good. So manufacturers, we talked to them. They went to the FDA and said, we want to test this. And they said, nope, it's not on our list. So they will only test the, the toxic chemicals that are on their list. And they all, all are endocrine disruptors in some way. And uh, so it's, or the, the, uh, the tiny little zinc and titanium. So they, they all are toxic. Yeah, I guess for physical sunscreen, there's mainly just those two, right? Zinc and titanium. Um, so my second question is um, for uh, the different uh, EMFs along the spectrum, right? There's, um, so UV is um, harmful, and then also like these lower Can frequency, you sorry, the lower frequency ones are also harmful, like the radio waves and, and so on. So I think it stands to reason, or at least I'm thinking in my head, that like the the frequencies sort of in the middle of the spectrum, like uh, the visible light and near infrared, would also have some risk. Is that true, or is that? Uh, it's not near, yeah. but it's natural. That's the thing. We've evolved with the natural. We haven't evolved with what we're creating, which is what's creating the problem. It, it's all the man-made uh, radiation is just really, really bad. So. Not to beat a dead horse about some other people here have heard it, but uh, NASA has been investigating carbon-60, which is yeah, a large I've molecule yeah. for uh, reducing radiation damage. They did, there are some experiments done giving lethal doses of gamma radiation to mice or rats, mm. and with a, depending on the dose and the radiation and so on, the rats who were given a lethal dose with carbon-60, didn't die at, I mean, they didn't even affect it. Because in outer space, of course, we don't have the protective atmosphere and the uh, deflection of magnetic uh, particles streaming in. So there's a different environment. And NASA is very interested in this because of the exposure. That's so, the carbon-60 is one of the things that might be looked at. <coughs> okay, another topic completely. In rooting around the um, Twitter world today, some people were talking about, gee, China has a, just a ton load of 5G transmitters all over the place. And there's a lot of people laying on the ground there around the 5G transmitters. So whether it's related or not, whether the 5G sensitizes people to the coronavirus, it's not yeah. clear, however, Something may come out of that research. Just keep your eyes open for it. Right. Well, that makes a lot of sense because the electromagnetic radiation uh, makes us in, destroys our immune balance, so we can't fight things like viruses. Yeah. Just like to make a comment. Uh, you're talking about EMF. Yeah. You're talking about EMF. Uh -huh. uh, one of the simple things a person can do is buy themselves a thirty-dollar EMF meter. Go around your bedroom, you may find a, a real high field in a wall that you didn't know about, mm -hmm. a clock radio that you didn't know about, right. 
and or you may put it on a wall over here and your computer's on the other side. You may want to move things around. But a $30 EMF meter will, will help you isolate and get rid of those sources of EMF. Well, the one thing, our house, I'm very grateful for our house because the back part of the house where our bedroom is, my office is, so it, it just shuts everything off by turning off the circuit breakers. So the whole back part of our house is just essentially dead. So, so we can do things like that. We really can. Uh, we found, when we did our house, we found one wall that was very active with EMF. Mm -hmm. And what it was, it was some wiring in there that went over to the, oh, right. yeah. uh, the box in the back of the house. We would have never figured that out without yeah. a meter. Yeah. So we moved our head of our bed from, from that side of the room to the opposite side of the room. Yeah, one of the things I want to say about meters is that um, the biological building inspector who did our house before I found this, uh, one of the things that would happen to me with the television uh, is my skin would just open up in four inch long hemorrhages. Just if the TV went on, I'd just, uh, just start hemorrhaging. Um, and so um, the biological building inspector had his expensive meters and he says, okay, it's zero here. Elizabeth, you can sit two feet back there. I couldn't sit in the next room. I knew when my husband turned the TV on because I'd start hemorrhaging in the next room, even though the zero's at the, the meter's at zero. So the meter is can't pick up what we are picking up. We're much more sensitive than any meter that can be made. So, so sorry, yeah, go ahead. I, I want to first of all thank you for your excellent work, and we're all really proud of you here in this room. Mm -hmm. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. But I, I do have a different opinion about. Um, Meters, I have a ton of meters. I have them in my car, you know, and it's just not 5G or Wi-Fi. It's dirty electricity uh, right. and yes. all, all kinds of other things. And it's not something that I would just get a $30 meter for. I would hire a, a building biologist mm -hmm. to come in, a professional person, or, you know, there's different um, scopes or whatever. But mm -hmm. if this is the time where us physicians team up with building biologists and because I you know I rarely go to someone's home and you really need to measure and mitigate mm -hmm. and um, in the meanwhile we're fixing everything else but so this is a plea to get a real professional in there that really know what they're doing Perfect. have the expensive meters I have ones that are not expensive I've only spent a couple thousand dollars but these are you know really critical things and really are important to get someone to be able to even feel safe in their own home. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Or refer you to other building biologists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and we, we had that done to our house. I mean, I, I truly believe that. I really do. I, I just wanted to be, make you aware that sometimes the meters aren't enough to pick up what we're picking up. Absolutely. So. I'm, I'm sensitive to solar flares. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm, I'm like one of you guys. Well, well, thank goodness the sun's been more quiescent. <laughs> okay. So, wow. Um, let's, okay. I think, uh, okay. we can come to a conclusion of this uh, part of the evening. And in fact, okay. uh, so please okay. give Dr. Florida another hand okay. for being here. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Thanks. So, so actually, this is, uh, I think you're at the end of your talk, right? Yeah. So, okay, so, so um, usually, as you know, many of you people who have been here before, that we have a second part. There's not a second speaker tonight. So this is it as kind of the end of the evening, but not really. So we have the food here as usual. Uh, Elizabeth is here, and you can come up and talk to her if you'd like to. And we've got several kinds of yeah materials and, and books and stuff for you to, to check out. Um, if you want to do an advocacy work, please see the lady over here on the um, on my right. And um, we're again here every third Thursday of the month. So please keep coming back if you're new, and please keep coming back if you're not new. And uh, with that, I'll say we'll end the formal part of the evening. And thank you for being here. Good night.